Hey guys, it's Anna, and welcome to my channel. Really looking forward to today's video because we're gonna be chatting about more affordable Middle Eastern fragrances, and when I tell you, we have some good ones, good ones in the bunch. And when filming these videos, I want to try to remember to continuously relay this tip of letting your fragrances sit when they arrive, just for anyone new, because I really find that it makes a difference. So with these affordable Arabian perfumes, when they get to my house, I spray them 10 times and then I just put them away and let them sit in my closet for a month because often they will have a chemical synthetic alcohol alcohol like smell to them and clearing out that first bit of the straw and just letting them sit gives you the experience that was intended. Think of it as like a soup or pasta, how they can often taste better the next day because the mixture has been sitting in all the spices and flavors, what have you, or wine. So I always let these sit for a month and then I make my judgments and I test them out. So the first one I wanted to talk about is Le Bois Bois de Vigny. And I was introduced to this fragrance through Maria. She was talking about a bunch of Middle Eastern fragrances with a friend of hers and they were gushing, raving about this one, saying how amazing it was, how it smelled expensive, like it was its own creation and I was just sold. This is such an elegant, smooth, vanilla coconut floral, perfect for spring and summer. This is in the family of fragrances such as Mikalef Ilang and Gold, uh, Lancome Idol Aura. It's not too similar or a dupe of anything, but I think if you enjoy those types of perfumes, then you would enjoy this. I'm really surprised there's no tropical yellow floral listed in here because I pick up a balmy, creamy Ylang Ylang. I only smell a small amount of rose. It's very quiet and more so in the opening. Amber and solar notes are listed and it absolutely puts you in the mindset of this perfectly sunny summer day. The sky is blue, there's a slight breeze in the air, it's not too hot out, and this warm beachy feel is coming through from the coconut, like a coconut butter almost, and then there's some vanilla bringing in this classy amount of sweetness. It's just gorgeous. Like this is right up my alley for the fragrances I gravitate towards in the warm weather. Beautiful, beautiful perfume. The next one I bought, Hayati Gold Elixir from Latafa. Blind bought this because I saw it going viral on TikTok. Piqued my interest. It's okay. I would describe this one as unisex. It's just very strong on the leather, which is not for me. And I'm not loving this particular combo of leather and peach. Those are the most prominent notes that I get from this. It's got a real ambery base, a lot of musk and a sharp bergamot, and it does give me a headache. It's not a bad scent, it's just really not my style, um, and it's certainly not for the faint of heart. It does smell expensive though, I will give it that, but simultaneously obnoxious, like a rude rich person comes to mind. And then I had several fragrances sent to me from Orientica, their new exclusive Oud collection. These were the only ones sent to me out of the video. So I'll start with Rouge. This is very similar to, as you could probably guess, Baccarat Rouge 540. The only difference I pick up is in the opening. Although it's listed in the base, it's in the opening that I do pick up on a bit of that seaweed note, making this smell like Baccarat Rouge, but with a green herbal marine twist to it. However, once it's fully dried down, that goes away and it smells just like Baccarat Rouge. Orientica does make another fragrance called Amber Rouge. If you're looking for a spot on dupe, I recommend that one over Rouge, Amber Rouge is where it's at. It's amazing. Exclusive Oud Emerald. This is a very green, aromatic, zesty, masculine fragrance for spring and summer. Galbanum, bay leaf, and oak moss give it that real earthy green and mossy character. And although very earthy, 
it's very fresh because of the mint and citrus. It's not dirty at all. It has a real punchy, zesty kick from ginger, adding fresh spiciness. This isn't anything unique. I've smelled a lot of masculine fragrances in this overall category, but it smells good, does the job. Could make a good casual fragrance for the warmer months. So overall, it's a like for me. Exclusive Oud Blue. This is supposed to be a dupe for Parfum de Marly Leighton. Comparing them side by side, Leighton is obviously more refined, it's smoother creamier, sweeter. I'm getting more of that vanilla. I get more lavender and citrus from blue. And I do pick up on a little bit of the geranium in here where I personally don't in Layton. The opening is where they have their greatest differences, but after about 25 minutes, they do become quite comparable. I love the Leighton DNA. I find it to be such an attractive scent profile and it's incredibly versatile as well. It works practically year round, works for so many different purposes and occasions. It's a very likable, easy reach kind of fragrance. It has a bit of a gourmand quality to it, but not overly so like whatsoever coming through from this creamy vanilla, bringing in this like cozy, inviting sweetness. There's a fresh quality coming through from apple, citruses. There's an aromatic lavender, fresh spiciness, and wood in the base. And overall, all these elements come together to create a really smooth, attractive blend. It's just a scent that tends to appeal to a lot of different people because depending on what you're looking for, whether you want something woody, fresh, spicy, a little bit gourmand, inviting, um, it kind of like ticks all those boxes. I do think it's a good one, and I am keeping this as a, as a backup for when Eric finishes Leighton. And then exclusive Oud Sport has a lot of note similarities to Parfum de Marly Calan. Again, the Parfum de Marly version is much more robust. It's thicker, more intense. Calan is a bold, spicy, woody, aromatic fragrance with a prominent orange, as is this, but this I would say is easier to like. I think Kalan is a good fragrance, but it's challenging, unique, powerful. It has a rugged character to it. So I think if you're looking for something in that vein, but toned down, this could be a good alternative. Exclusive Oud Sport also smells fresher. And another difference I pick up between the two is that this has an airy saffron, giving it a tinge of sweetness, not too much. And it also smells more green because of the cypress. And and the last one from this particular collection, Exclusive Oud Classic. This is in the same family as Zerzhoff's Herba Pura, but better. I've said this many times, but for anyone new, I'm not a fan of Herba Pura. It's too screechy, it gives me a headache, the musk is too much. This is far more palatable. You're still getting that familiar fizzy musk, but it's toned down. I have a couple fragrances in my collection that vibe with this kind of DNA. I love Maisa's L'Amour Eternal, which is focused on mango. I have Swiss Arabian Shagaf Oud Amar, which is primarily peach, then melon. This is primarily melon, than pineapple. You don't need all of these in your collection, so if you're into the profile, I say just go for the one that sounds most appealing to you based off of the most prominent fruit featured. If you're curious what my preference is between the two Middle Eastern offerings, I do prefer Shagaf Udamar. This is good. Comparing this to the others I've spoken about, this has an ozonic presence to it because of that prominent melon. You're getting the watery fruit. And this is perfect for summer because of the pineapple. It also has a gourmand accord listed and that gives the fruits a sugared feel, like a sugar rim on a tropical cocktail. It smells like a good time. It's bright, it's fun, it's fresh. I get the bergamot coming through as well. If you love mango in your perfumes, you have to try Latafa Ajayab Dubai portrait. This smells very similar to Stefan Umbert Lucas Soleil de Jeda Mango Kiss. And I don't know if you guys remember or not, but I said I really liked the smell of that perfume, but it smells like a luxe mango body butter to me or a mango colada type of blended cocktail. Very good, but I just think way too expensive for the type of scent that you're getting. In comes this. 
this is a price point I can get down with. So if you are looking for a creamy, ultra smooth, mango body butter type of perfume with a prominent note of osmanthus. It has a really beautiful, bright, tropical, warm floral component that also has a fruity nuance. You've got to give this a try. To me, this is a scent that is not very complex. It's more of a linear profile, but it just smells good. It's a happy perfume. It's got warmth from amber. There's woody notes in the base. I absolutely pick up on an ultra creamy sandalwood. Like I can't stress enough how creamy of a profile this is. And I only get a little bit of the oud personally, and that's just bringing in a bit of depth. But overall, this is a very mango osmanthus forward fragrance perfect for summer it's bright it's fun if you love your tropical fruity perfumes like this is beautiful everyone and their mother has spoken about latafa khamra kahua and although the og is great i do prefer this version and if you're curious about my in-depth review on the og i covered it in an unfiltered opinions episode this in comparison is not as sweet I also find this more unisex. The, the other one is as well, but I just, in comparison, I found the OG a little bit more feminine leaning. This is, this is just more of a unisex vibe to me. The original is more warm, spicy, and woody. It has a prominent note of dates, which smells great, but it's usually a note I don't vibe with because it can come across too dense and sweet for me. What I enjoy about this is that it's a gourmand, but it's grounded nicely by that coffee note. It comes off like medium roast coffee beans, so it's not too intense or dark they don't overtake the scent, but they add a nice bit of depth and earthiness to break apart the other gourmand notes. I also get the coffee the most prominently in the opening and mid, and while it does absolutely last throughout the life of the fragrance, several hours into the deep dry down, it does really quiet down for me, and then the vanilla will then become the most prominent note on me. This is a fantastic fall winter gourmand. It's crowd pleasing, it's cozy. It's got spiciness from cinnamon, cardamom, ginger. So it's got warmth, a little bit of zest from the start. Praline, vanilla, tonka bean, and candied fruits give it this gooey, inviting warmth. And then it's got a bit of an ambery feel from the benzoin. I can completely understand why this has gone so viral and it's such a loved fragrance. I think it's absolutely such a fantastic release from Latafa. Last but certainly not least, this is so good. Another Latafa. They have got to be my favorite affordable Middle Eastern house. I have so many fragrances from them that I love. This is Musamam White Intense. This is an ultra smooth blend. It's got a little bit of a tropical feel to it, but not overly so, like not nearly as much as something like this, but it will definitely put you in the mindset of the spring summer season. This certainly has an elegant, refined nature to it. It smells expensive. And looking at the reminds me section on Fragrantica, I really disagree. It, it does not remind me specifically of anything. It has an elegant, creamy, powdery sandalwood, a prominent note of coconut, and I feel like I'm getting this like fresh coconut meat as well as this creamy coconut milk. It's got a balmy, slightly sweet ylang ylang that's contributing to just a little bit of this tropical touch, but again, it's not too much of that. This is honestly a perfume that I could wear pretty much year round. I just personally wouldn't reach for it in the winter, but you have like these warm, sunny qualities, but then also the sandalwood and benzoin, that little bit of a ambery feel that will also make it work for the fall. And the musk in here, I feel is giving it this clean cashmere like quality. Absolutely beautiful and highly recommend. So that wraps up the fragrances for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't already. If you want to see me in any more videos, I'd appreciate it very much. I hope you guys are having a great day and I hope to see you in my next video.